with that, the conclusion of services remembering the life of former First Lady Nancy Reagan. Former First Lady died at the age of 94 on Sunday in her home in Bel Air. Uh, throughout the service, which lasted about an hour and a half, we heard uh, from passages from scripture being read by family members. We heard from notable journalists who uh, were also close friends. We heard from colleagues of her husband's. We heard from her children. And we heard from the Reverend Stuart A. Kenworthy, the vicar from the Washington National Cathedral. I want to bring back my panel. Lisa Belkin is our chief national correspondent. Dan Clydman is our deputy editor. Mary Gordon was the assistant to Nancy Reagan's press secretary during President Reagan's second term. And Sally Quinn is a columnist at the Washington Post and moderator of On Faith. She is in Washington, D.C. Sally, I want to begin with you because uh, some of the most poignant and memorable moments came from the words that we heard from Nancy's children, particularly Patty, very honest, talking about their relationship, the love that the two shared, but obviously the conflicts that the two shared as well. I was totally blown away by Patty Davis's speech. I thought she was absolutely wonderful. I mean, also, it was extremely well written. She's a, she's a beautiful writer. But I think that her honesty was very raw. Uh, you know, she was so totally straightforward about the relationship that she had with her mother. And the fact that, and we've all known this and read it many times before, but that, that they were, Nancy and Ronnie, together, they were this entity that couldn't be penetrated. And that clearly the children were never able to penetrate that and never felt that they were part of that circle. And so that was particularly poignant and sad, I thought, for me um, to listen to, because I can't imagine what it would feel like to be a child with parents on the one hand who so loved each other, but on the other hand feeling somehow left out. Um, I think Ron Jr. was uh, obviously more humorous about it, calling his mother a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, But in a way, you could see he was trying to be sort of flip throughout most of his talk, but then kind of fell apart a little bit at the end. Um, so that I think for both of them, it had to have been an extremely difficult. You know, they always say that it's easier for people when they have a, a really